and we have a very special guest today. It's Julie Hunter, the owner of the Hunter Studios. How are you doing, Julie? I'm good. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I uh, we have so much to talk about. You have this new studio that you just opened. You do photography, you do video, you do corporate you do weddings, you do boudoir, which we'll ask you about later. Um, everything. Everything. You do a ton <laughs> of stuff, which is so much fun because we'll have so much to talk about. Um, right now, I'm just going to do a quick ad for um, a partner restream, and then I'll come right back. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. This is Restream. It takes your lives and sends it to several places like YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. It also has a live studio, which is very cool. And um, you should check it out if you want to do lives. Um, it's a service I'm using right now to send to a bunch of places. Check out Restream. There is a live link in the comments on this live broadcast. So check out Restream. Um, and Julie, so where do we start? Where do we start? I'm going to ask you the first question. I always ask everyone because it's a good place to start. When did you know you wanted to be an artist, be creative, take photos, do video? Were you in high school? Were you five? Were you in college? So um, when I was younger, I used to have uh, like a bunch of disposable cameras. Like this was back in the you know 80s and whatnot. And I would have all the disposable cameras. And I kind of felt like I was the um, kind of the photographer of the family, but not serious of course I was too young for that and then once um you know like all of us maybe in our 40s uh photography really wasn't a you know that wasn't a career that was just a hobby and so I didn't really go my education didn't go that way like toward photography I didn't really get into the idea of actually doing photography as a career or even more seriously until um I was in my like um uh, mid thirties. Oh wow. And, um, <clears throat> I had, uh, teamed up with a, a lady who was moving here from California and she was a, she's a very successful, she is a very successful, uh, wedding photographer. Um, she became my mentor. Uh, and so I second shot for her for, you know, dozens and dozens of weddings and kind of got the taste for it. Then another friend of mine actually went to college and kind of learned, like she taught me the like creative side of it, like how to, you know, like hone that eye and, you know, perspective and really getting the picture out of your head and into the camera. And, uh, my other friend went to college and learned the ISOs and the, you know, apertures and all that kind of stuff. And I'm a, uh, I love the technical side of photography. So I was like, Oh yeah, teach me that. And so, um, those two things combined and then it kind of just blew up from there. I think the main thing I like to talk about when it comes to why I am who I am and where I got to today is, um, I joined a group in Atlanta called the Atlanta photographers guild and we shot all the time together. It was like a, basically a social function for, uh, photographers and we would shoot models like as practice. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, you know, after a while it became a place just to hang out and network and stuff. And that's another huge part of who I am, uh, in this industry is, um, yes, I like to take photos, but I really love to network. I really love to be with people and, um, just like you ask them questions and where they came from and why they're doing what they're doing and that kind of thing. So, I just had I just had a thought that's very cool um, about cameras and um, you know lenses and ISOs and all that kind of stuff. Do you think it's easier now with the digital and I forget what the Apple program is called that everybody uses that they sort of color correct the, the photo. oh Photoshop yeah and Lightroom Lightroom mm -hmm. yeah Lightroom Photoshop. Um, do you feel like with digital it's easier to be a photographer or harder versus the film oh, for sure i mean you know you're 
I mean, I know I basically got my start with, I had a film camera for several years before I bought a, a digital. And so I, but I really shot on auto. I mean, don't tell anybody you know, <laughs> just between us. Right. Right. That's Nobody's listening. watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I did start with a film camera when I was 25, my mom, my mom gave me my first and it was an SLR. So it literally had like one of those lenses that came off and it was one of the old rebels and, um, but anyway, fast forward to when I started second shooting for the the lady, um, I bought my first digital camera and I would say for sure, because you're getting to see exactly what you're taking a picture of right immediately away. You don't have to worry about, you know, am I getting it or is it too dark or light? You can check right there, you know, but with film, you have to really know what you're doing to make sure you're getting what you want. <laughs> it's right. kind of like, I guess, a surprise once you develop that film. Right. I know that um, as a video editor, I was in New York and uh, for the first time I cut a film on film in my mm -hmm. 20s and I absolutely hated it. Um, you had all these literally bins, which they call them in the digital world now also, but there were these almost like clothing bins and you had clothes pins and you had to hang up each take. And then you had to sync up the audio and there were several tracks of audio and you laid it on this whole thing called the steam bank. And I was like, and we had glue and cement to put it together. And I was like, this is awful. I do not want to do this for my life. And then all of a sudden <laughs> somebody said, hey, uh, down the hall, there's an online edit room that just came out called Avid. Maybe you should check that out. And oh, I nice. did. And, and that became my career for 25 years because that, oh, wow. that made sense to me. You know what I mean? It made total mm -hmm. sense. Whereas this thing where you take like four days to do two minutes of a movie. Oh my God, I could never do that. Yeah. It's just like torture. It's totally, totally different than digital. Oh yeah. And, and I'll say when I started doing video, like it was exciting. I, I love to do new things. And so like, I'm a bit ADD, ADD when it comes to, you know, trying to do one thing or another. Like, so when I was um, also another part of my career is working for Aperture, which is a local camera rental company in Atlanta. I worked for them for like six to seven years. And while I already had like pretty good knowledge of cameras and photography, um, I started to tinker around with doing video right. and then like starting to take a piece of gear home on the weekends just to learn it just so that I could be a better customer service agent really. So that when someone would come in and say, Hey, how do you use this glide cam? I was like, I don't really know. So like I started taking them home so I could have a better knowledge of how to use that glide cam or whatever. So, um, the one thing I was going to mention is like, you know, when you switch over and start doing like video, it's so frustrating because you can't really like, you know, like photography, I can throw up a sneak peek from the day. I can be like, oh, look at this picture I took today. And it's really quick and easy to get one up. But like right. video, you can't really like <laughs> throw up a quick, you know, anything that day unless you just go home and start like pulling all that footage in and like looking for a good piece or something like that. So it's not quite as easy. <laughs> no, it's not. But even on the film sets now, I know that there's actual jobs where people are literally on set, because I, I talked to a guy who did this. He was literally on set, um, and they're taking in the uh, cards from the red camera, or the airy camera, or whatever. And his job was just to like roughly s set up a rough cut for like Baby Driver. and. Oh, and so right, they right, shoot right, the scene yeah. and they, they lay out the takes and so the director can sort of fast forward through the takes and make sure that he's getting somewhat what he wants. Like, right, right, you right. know, and, and see angles and if he has coverage and all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. some people are doing that right on the and And I've seen that a lot in TV and film where the editor goes to the set and they start editing. Literally, it's when they're shooting the camera, they're taking the cards out. Oh, for out. sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if I had a big budget, of course, I'd have an editor <laughs> right beside me and, <laughs> you know, making sure we're getting out. But yeah, it's definitely like when you, anybody who does video knows, like having a monitor is super important. So you can make sure right. like if you're looking at some little tiny screen, that's not going to show you what you're getting. You really need to have like a pretty good size monitor to uh, obviously watch what you're doing and making sure that you're getting the angle and there's nothing weird in the background and et cetera. Right. So just like any other thing that you're doing, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I definitely um, I worked for the NBA a lot, and a lot there was a lot of these ENG crews who got shoot stuff, and in, like you said, they only had the little screen because they were literally running down the hallway to get interviews and with NBA players or whatever. And 
um, the whole time that they were doing this interview, there was like this sort of light flickering in the background that they couldn't see because the screen was so small. And it was so oh, distracting yeah. that we had to like crop the guy's head, you know, like this much <laughs> so that we would get the distracting light in the interview. So stuff like that, you miss stuff definitely without the big monitor. But let's talk about, oh, yeah. this is so exciting. I saw it on Facebook. We're seeing it behind you. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to bring up a little picture. Let's talk about your new studios, the Hunter Studios. Yeah, so so new, in fact, that I just got my uh, certificate of occupancy this last week, so it's like baby new. Um, we um, have been working on the place for about three months, just waiting for the city to let us open, and um, basically, like... Like I said, one of my big things about the industry is networking and and talking to people and all that. So for the last, you know, 20 years or so in the time that I've, you know, been a photographer, I've been an admin of that big group, Atlanta Photographer, uh, Atlanta Photographers Guild. I've worked at, uh, you know, Aperturent, met thousands of customers. You know, I've, I've had such an amazing resource of being able to ask people questions and what would you do about this? Or what would you like to see in a studio? And, um, so it's always kind of been in my heart and in my, like my dreams, like to run my own studio and do it the way I want to and have my own aesthetic. And, um, and so this kind of popped up over the summer where I looked on Craigslist and looked at this place and kind of was like, okay, what's really wrong with this place? Because it looks too good to be true. And I brought a friend with me just to make sure that I wasn't like, um, I have a tendency to uh, get up in the clouds. And (laughs) (laughs) so their job was to make sure I was like planted on the ground and making sure this was like viable and we could do it. And um, after uh, literally about two weeks of negotiations, I signed a contract and we started moving forward with to get this place open. So um, I'm super excited that um, we're open and we're available to rent to other people. And of course, while yes, I am a photographer, this main purpose of this is to rent out to other photographers and even um, videographers, you know, like for music videos or whatever, yoga studio, whatever you what want is, it to be. That's what it, what that's is. What the, it is. Uh, yeah. What is the square footage? It's, uh, well, there's 2,200 square feet of open warehouse space up top. And then I have another 1,400 in the basement. Wow. That's and a lot overall, of space. there's about 4,400 square feet, including this nice big lobby. So there's, there's tons of space. And then there's probably about an acre of outdoor, um, green space, which I love because that's something that you don't typically get at other Atlanta studios. Um, most, studios around Atlanta are, you know, office spaces. And so when you walk outside, it's parking lot or it's a city street yes. or it's whatever. Um, this place is nice and big on the inside, you know, when it, when the weather, you know, kind of makes you be inside, but there's also this huge space outside that's green and lush. And, um, even though it's technically my parking lot, there's grass that's grown over and I'm not going to get rid of that. I'm going to keep it pretty natural. And I mean, I'm just, I could talk about it for a long time, but I'm not excited about like all the different things that this place offers. So, right. I want to bring up a couple photos here. First, I have the photo. Um, there's a little bit of delay on the um, okay. Facebook, but it's the one with the chair and the light and the piano. Uh, okay, cool. And and those are the walls there, right? That are all sort of worn and. Um, Right. They're kind of peeling. Peeling. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. very cool. Everyone's been asking me like, Hey, are you going to, are you going to paint over there? I was like, heck no, this is. Oh, what I no, love no, about no, this no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't. <laughs> um, and then I just want to ask you because I started this podcast during COVID. I started it in April. I researched it for several, six months or something, but, um, you started this during COVID and I saw you mention that somewhere in one of your websites or Facebook posts or something. Yeah. <laughs> like how crazy is that? And this leads to right. a question that I ask a lot of artists because I consider you to be an artist uh, uh, like mm-hmm. myself is that you have to be a little bit crazy to be an artist, right? Like, oh, it's yeah. COVID. <laughs> oh, it's so much money. There's a huge investment. What are you doing? And then you get people yeah. from both sides saying, go for it. It's crazy. <laughs> So do you feel like that? Do you feel like you just like block all that stuff and say, I'm just doing it? (laughs) Yeah. um, So 
I feel like opening any business, right, is crazy. You know, right. any, opening any business at any time of any, you know, at any time of the year is kind of, it's a risk. You know, you're, it's always going to be a risk. And so that's what I kept telling myself about opening it. You know, it was kind of on the tail end of the quarantine because we right. were, you know, Georgia was like locked down until the beginning of June. And I found this place literally June 8th. So like almost right as we were kind of peeking the door back open for businesses to kind of start a little bit, start back up. That's when I kind of started with this. So now there's a whole lot more places open. The restrictions are a lot lighter. We're I think in phase what two in Georgia or something like that. So like, we're kind of already kind of moving on to kind of getting back to um, like, I've been asking around to different people, like, are you taking pictures again? Are you starting to create more films? Like, what are you doing? And and because people were starting to get kind of get back in the role of things, I kind of felt like it was, it was time, you know, it was all like a good time. Also um, talk about timing and the aesthetic of this particular studio is the um, closing of the goat farm, the temporary closing of the goat farm is happening this year where they are renovating that place. Okay. And so the goat farm is, is infamous. I don't know if, are you familiar with Mm -hmm. that particular place? So it has a very specific warehouse aesthetic, right? Right. And so um, when I found this place, I was like, wow, you know, so if the goat farm is going to be closed for a couple of years, uh, this could be your temporary new home, you know, while they get, that place uh, renovated, you know, feel free to come and use this place because it has the very same feel to it, except for uh, it may be a little on the cleaner side, maybe not much, but it's a little (laughs) cleaner than the goat farm was. It's very hard to keep a a warehouse clean. It's not going to be pristine, but it's going to be a little cleaner, but we do have very nice bathrooms. I'll say that. (laughs) Well, um, as far as the, the whole COVID thing, I know people are nervous What are your, I mean, you don't have a lot of people there. It's not like you're a restaurant, but are people wearing masks? Are they, um, what is the protocol at Hunter Studios as far as that? Because I know it's still happening. Right. It's, it's really according to how comfortable the photographer and their, because, you know, again, my client is the photographer who comes here and brings their client. So it's like a two-step process and I'm comfortable with whatever they're comfortable with. And with 2,200 square feet up here, it's not like you're on top of each other. There's plenty of space to be, you know, do the whole social distancing thing. And uh, if you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you feel comfortable, it's fine. We have, there's plenty of space here and it gets cleaned and, you know, on the, on the, you know, and it, there's really not a lot of stuff that you're touching necessarily here either. You just kind of come in and take your pictures and you leave and the bathrooms get clean. That's about the only thing that's pretty commonplace for everybody to be touching. So, um, so we're doing, you know, the basic, uh, what we need to do to make sure people are safe and all of that. Um, at the same time, trying to get back to work. <laughs> right. Let's get back to work. Um, so, so let me, this may be a video question, but, um, I know a lot of studios in Atlanta have psychs and green screens. Like, is that a possibility for you if someone wants to do a shoot like that or. So I'm not going to have a psych wall and, and I'll tell you why. Um, I feel like every other place in Atlanta offers psych walls or green screens or whatever. And I'm really trying to, you know, like there are so many options in Atlanta for you to rent studio space and stuff. And I really wanted to be different from, uh, some of the other places that offer the very same white walls or very, um, office like, you know, look to them. I really wanted this to be a specific aesthetic that necessarily wouldn't be the psych wall that you see in everybody else's space. So, um, this is definitely, you know, like I probably say it a thousand times, but you know, this is definitely warehouse. It's, you know, peeling paint, it's wood walls. It's, um, yeah, sorry to you know, interrupt, just, but while you're saying this, um, I'm putting up some pictures of your studio. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's so, really cool. You've got those giant sort of beam wood beams up above and mm-hmm. there is actually a white wall and then there's the walls that are worn. 
And then let's right. see, this picture is just that's, you in the front. That's my joke is, yeah, the, the picture you put up is, that's kind of my joke is like, I do have one white wall if you really, really want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, um, it's really, I, again, I go back to saying like, uh, it has so many options. There's, uh, it is, there is a clean side to it. There's a rugged side to it. There's the green space outside. Right. I'm even commissioning someone to put up some, uh, graffiti on the, on one side of the building. And so there'll even be some graffiti on the outside of the building. I mean, it's just really an all in one kind of deal with the exception of, uh, the, um, psych wall stuff. I probably won't have that or green screen. I do have some paper backdrops to have some things like that. If you really just kind of want that look. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, what you see is what you get kind of, kind of deal. Right. Okay, so where do you want to go next? Do you want to go to boudoir photos? Do you want to go to corporate? Do you want to talk about weddings? Uh, let's talk about some of your other businesses. Sure. Um, well, we can say weddings in one sentence, which is um, I retired in 2020. Oh, okay. And my last wedding is actually on the 10th of October. So woo, I'm done with that. <laughs> Um, I've done weddings since I got started, but it's just, it's not my, obviously with this, a studio now where, you know, this is my focus now. So, um, and really my passion is, uh, more kind of like one-on-one -on -one with someone. So, okay. I, you know, I love doing like headshots or portraits, um, but really boudoir is kind of like my, or intimate portraiture is kind of where we're moving with the terminology because boudoir people kind of put. You know, if I say boudoir, someone will think, oh, that's like in a box and they'll kind of box out what that definition of that right. is. And I, you know, I asked one time on my social media, on my Instagram, I said, if I took a picture of someone outside of a bedroom, would you still consider that a boudoir or would you call that something else? And they were like, oh, that's not boudoir. <laughs> right. And I was like, well, this whole place is not a bedroom. So I definitely have taken boudoir here. And so it, it, I think that the it has a kind of a, not a negative connotation, but it has like a, a limiting definition if you just say boudoir. So I really love the idea of intimate portraiture, which means it could be so much more and it's not limited to a gender or anything like that. You know, it's open to everybody. And I saw, because I was looking at uh, your websites, um, your LinkedIn and all that, like I saw that you have a workshop for photography. Um e Yep. Is that have, happening? Uh, yeah, I have a, um, a model meetup that's happening on uh, Sunday, October, I think that's the 4th. And uh, basically, I uh, hired about seven models to come out. And so we're going to be shooting all around the property. And um, <clears throat> it's going to be limited to about 20 photographers. So it's going to be a, a small event for such a big place. Um, but in a way it's a way for especially new photographers to kind of gain an instant portfolio because you're getting to shoot so many different models and, um, and so many different looks that we've already talked about. So like, I'm pretty excited about that. And most all of the models I've already worked with at one point or another, or I'm, I'm excited to work with, um, this Sunday. So excited about that. Right. And do you have any other classes or workshops or is that just the, the one for now? That's the one that I had I'd actually set it up for May, but as we all know, COVID. Um, so I had to reschedule that for October. And then coming in 2021, I will start doing monthly workshops myself. And so they'll be really small, very focused workshops. Like I'll probably have one that's focused on portraits, one that's focused on like maternity, just things that I've learned over the years. And it's really like, basically, um, it's a little less on like, how to work a camera, but more about like how to treat that specific client and how to get the best, you know, what are you, what are you focusing on when you're taking a maternity picture? What are you focusing on when you're taking a headshot? Like, how should it look? You know, that kind of thing, like the elements as well, like the right. weather, you know, are you, if it's a maternity, are you making sure it's nice and warm in here or cooled off? You know, how does she feel and that kind of thing. So. Right. And, and we haven't said even where you are. You're in Marietta, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm one mile south of the square in Marietta. So super close. Oh, cool. And um, we'll get to this at the end again. But do you want to just mention your website or how people can find you? Oh, sure. It's um, the Hunter Studios. And then if you're interested in seeing the actual boudoir stuff that I do or intimate portraiture, that would be uh, naturallyboudoir.com. 
Very cool. So mm-hmm. uh, Katie uh, Snyder, who you know, um, yes. I'm not sure. How, did you work with her before? Is she part of this guild or something? Uh, no, I think I met her through Aperture. I think she was a, a customer, and I met her once time when she came in. Okay, which is how I met a lot of people in Atlanta. So <laughs> right, right. She was saying uh, when I, I I interviewed her, um, I just posted her interview a couple days ago, actually. But I interviewed her a couple months ago because I make these Facebook lives, and then okay. a few months later, I make them into an audio podcast. But she was saying that um, her dream was kind of to travel around with her husband, who's a musician. And and she also had a wedding photography business, but she sort of had these associates and she sort of mm-hmm. had them run it for a couple of years while she traveled with the band, took photos and wrote a book and all this kind oh, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so she kind of mm-hmm. passed that on. But um, you haven't passed yours on or sold it. It's just over. Yeah, the wedding stuff is, no, I, I, basically I st- I'm referring, I mean, like over the last, again, 20 years, I've obviously accumulated quite the number of people that I've either worked with myself personally, or I know them really well, and their work is amazing. And so like, if someone comes to me and says, or if someone refers me to a wedding, I'm like, oh, no, not me. Let me go. Let me give you a list of five people that I think would be perfect for Usually what I do is I ask them what their budget is and then I find people in that budget range because I think it's obviously like if, if someone's coming to me saying, Hey, I, I, you know, this bride only has a thousand dollars. Then I go find someone who could, who could work that thousand dollars instead of like giving them a $5,000 photographer say, you know, so. Right. Um, do you have any, um, stories from your 20 year career about, um, a shoot that I don't want to say went bad, but maybe it just rained at a wedding. And, it, and um, Katie had a story about how her first wedding, she ran out of film and she had to borrow film oh, wow. from the <laughs> sister of the bride. And, and that's how she made it through it. But but yeah, do you yeah. have any crazy stories about any shoots or? Well, as far as rain, since it is raining here in Atlanta today, I will go ahead and talk about rain. I did a beach wedding for um, a really close friend of mine's son. He was getting married on the beach, and we all went down to Tybee Island. And you could kind of see the clouds in the distance as we're all, you know, making our descent down to the beach. And so literally as the last person in the wedding party lands in their position— and the bride gets down there, it like dr- opened up, like it right. just poured on us. And so I was there with a, a friend of mine that I used to work with at Aperture. And she does amazing video work now. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to not get her last name right. Cause she got married. So, but Jamie was with me down in Tybee and she was doing the video for me while I was doing the pictures. And we both had someone next to us with an umbrella so like there's pictures of us <laughs> at this wedding, just like hunched under an umbrella, just trying to capture what we can um, while the rain is just coming down. It's a whole notebook experience. You know how like that movie went and everything right. is so romantic and everything. And they just plowed right through and they kiss each other and they're just like drenched in rain. It was really romantic and sweet. And everybody went back and got dried off. And then we went to the reception. It was so sweet. I mean, like, yeah, it was kind of crazy. And um kind of scary at first, but we just made sure to stay under the umbrellas and got back to the car as quick as possible with the gear. Of course, that was our main concern was like gear being out in water, but um, it turned out okay. Everything was, everything was safe. (laughs) Oh yeah. This is completely unrelated. I'll give you a a little break. Um, (laughs) So I went to this wedding in Oregon and the beginning of the wedding, it was really hot out. We were under these trees and the ring bearer, this little 10 year old boy just fainted. He fell like a tree. It was just like, you know, and so that was like a little drama, but I don't know what happened. A bunch of people got drunk and every, there was a pool there and everybody jumped into the pool with their, even the happen. bride with her wedding dress and tuxes and all this kind of crazy stuff. It was one <laughs> crazy wedding, uh, and somewhere in Eugene, Oregon, I think it was. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was totally nuts. So. So this has been great, and we'll go to like your website again, how people can find you at the end. But if you can tell me, Julie, uh, advice that you <laughs> advice that you might have for somebody, uh, maybe uh, starting out, um, you know, as a photographer or video entrepreneur, they want to start their own business. What would you say to people 
who are younger and want to do what you're doing now? I would say um, mostly what I say in my workshops is uh, get yourself some business knowledge because I feel like there's a lot of people with the skills to be a photographer or the skills to be a video, you know, whatever you're going to be in this industry. But the hard part is the, the business side of it, like um, knowing how to handle contract, knowing how to use a contract or even to use a contract at all, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so honestly, I feel like the focus needs to be on how to run your business efficiently, how to market yourself efficiently, how to get out there. It's more than just getting a camera for Christmas. And then all of a sudden now I'm a photographer. Let me shoot you with the flowers, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's so much more involved. And so, um, that's usually what I tell people is to get, um, get some business knowledge under your, you know, I don't know how to say that. Under your belt. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I was like, there's an under the something there. <laughs> under the belt. It gets the, so, um, I, it just reminded me of a story that I just heard and I won't say what the business is, but this okay. building is a very sought after building in Atlanta and, and it's uh, by the Beltline. A lot of people want to use it. And so the contract for these businesses to go into this building is a two year contract. And if something okay. goes wrong and your business fails or I, I don't even know, like the contract was horrible because COVID happened and oh, they couldn't get out yeah. of it. And they still wanted oh, them to pay this ridiculous amount of rent, $3,000, yeah. $4,000 a month when nobody was coming, like people weren't allowed to come. So, oh, right. so yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's horror stories about people trying to start businesses. And, mm -hmm. and, um, I looked into franchises for a while and it's like, Oh my God, you know, like <laughs> you make a 3%, 7% profit in a pizza place. You make like this much profit and you're working 80, a hundred hours a week. So, the mm -hmm. question, one last question, how do you, and I asked this to Katie and so many other people on my show, and a lot of people ask me too, because I do a lot of stuff, like, how do you do it all? How do you mm -hmm. cover all the bases and make sure there's no slippage? Do you have a friend? Do you have a partner? Do you have, like, um, uh, someone who does your calendar? Like, what, how do you do it all? Because you have to be in 10 places at once. Yeah, um... So I definitely have tons of people that support me and, uh, you know, all along the way, like I told you, I've been here for like three months trying to get this place, you know, ready to open. And I mean, like I've literally been overwhelmed emotionally from the, woo, I better not start crying on this thing. Um, but like the, uh, you know, just the overwhelming response and love and support from everybody, because not only are they excited about us just in general, a studio being open in Atlanta, but they're happy for me because they know right. this is like my dream. And so, you know, like I said, over the years, I've accumulated quite a number of, um, I mean, who I would call friends, you know, in the industry and, and associates and acquaintances and everything. But I do have like a tight circle of friends that have, <laughs> have to also hear me cry or be stressed out. Or there's a lot of people that's actually helped me not lose my mind over the fact that it took us three months to get in here instead of just the couple of weeks I thought it might take. <laughs> right. I know there's people going, uh -huh, I told you so. I told you it was going to take longer. But, um, you know, I'm just a very optimistic kind of person. And so I was trying to see the the good and like, it's going to be soon. It's going to be soon. And everybody was trying to tell me how it wouldn't be so soon, but it's fine. We're here now we're open. So, um, we're just looking forward to all the positive things that's going to come out of this place. And, um, uh, I do have someone that's been working with me since the very beginning. As a matter of fact, um, I've already thanked him like a hundred thousand times on different ways in social media, but I literally wouldn't have the studio without him because he was actually helping me, um, build the, uh, business model for another studio that I was managing prior to this studio. And then when I was let go from that, I, he said, you know, maybe you should go and look and see if there's another place that's available, like for your own. And at first I was just like, what? Like it's COVID. Like, how am I going to yeah. open my own place? And it's one thing to run something of someone else's with their money, <laughs> right. but it's a whole nother ball game when it's like me, my name on the lease and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I, I woke up the next day and pulled up Craigslist and literally this place was the first place that I saw. 
And it was too good to be true. In my mind, I thought something was wrong with it. And I brought him out that that was a Tuesday. And I brought him out Friday with me to look it over. And like I said, two weeks later, we were signing the contract and um, or I was signing the contract. I mean, he's just been a huge supporter of mine. And he actually he actually handmade that sign for me as well, oh, him cool. and his dad. And so he's been a super big it's Scott Moore, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mean to not say his name, but Scott Moore. And so like he's been helping me with pretty much everything around here and keeping me sane. And, uh, well, probably I'm driving him insane, but, um, so we're finally open. I'm excited. And, um, and there's so many other people, Oscar of Apaturant has been a huge help, um, and supporter of mine. Um, he's been a friend of mine since right before he went super public in Atlanta. When he first started, it was him and his wife meeting people in a coffee shop you know, and now he has locations in DC and Texas and he's got a huge headquarters in Atlanta. And, um, he, uh, we met a long time ago. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with flicker.com, but that's how we all kind of met each Mm. other on that space. And, um, he sent me a message and said, Hey, can I come to one of your, cause I had like a little social meetup group that I had created. It's kind of like a spinoff of the APG And he said, Hey, can I come into your group and show you some equipment that I have for rent? And at first I was like, who's this guy? Like, I didn't know him. (laughs) And, um, I'm so glad that I said yes, but he, he came down and he was such a sweet guy. Him and his wife are from Venezuela. They're so sweet. And, uh, ever since then we've been like really, really close and he's always sponsored or helped or supported me and everything I've ever done done along the way. Um, That's great. not only did he provide me a job for six or seven years, he's, uh, he's the first person I went to when I thought about doing this, I was like, Hey, is this smart? Like during COVID, do you think this is good? I showed him all of my, you know, numbers. And he was like, yeah, this is great. You're doing, this is go for it. You know? And I was like, okay. So with his support, I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> right. So, but there's an inherent optimism that, uh, a lot of my guests have, including you, and, and I've always had it also. And I have to be mm-hmm. honest, this COVID thing sort of threw me for a loop because it put everything on hold. And I'm used to, I'm a, from Boston, but I lived in New York and San Francisco, and, and I just had this yeah. thing about moving, moving, let's go, forward, forward. And everything was like molasses. And I just mm-hmm. woke up one day a few weeks ago, and I was like, everything's going to be fine. Let's go. Come on, let's do it. And and yeah. uh, even thought about, you know, stopping the podcast. And now I've had I've been in magazines and had incredible help from people. There's these two women who are, are helping me, Bonnie and Kaylee. Um, oh, cool. I'm part of this network now where I'm doing film interviews and meeting all these mm-hmm. people. And, and it's like, if you build it, they will come. You know what I mean? I mean, my <laughs> podcast is much smaller than you know, opening a studio and, and costs a lot less to open, but right, still right. it's that idea of like, if you make something and you're passionate <laughs> about it, people will notice. And if you've been doing it for 20 years, people will notice even more. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. so congrats on the studio. <laughs> so awesome Thanks. to talk to you. Another <laughs> optimistic person out there cranking during COVID rather than, you know, curling <laughs> up and going away. Very, yeah. very cool. And where can everybody find you uh, on so, the web uh, for the boudoir and for the studios? Yeah, for sure. So the boudoir or my intimate uh, portraiture that I do personally is naturallyboudoir.com. And then, of course, like if you want to rent the studio space or you want to see more pictures or get like a little tour of it, you can go to thehunterstudios.com. Very cool. Everybody <laughs> check it out. Uh, support local businesses. Uh, Julie, thank you so much for doing this. It's been great talking to you. And, uh, you too, thanks. I wish you the best of luck, and I want to see what happens over the next year or two, so I'll be following you on Facebook. But good luck with everything. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>